Hello all, welcome to session 93 of Software Testing Made Easy course. In this session, I'm going to explain about boundary value analysis, which is one of the black box test design techniques. So let's get started. What exactly is this boundary value analysis? As already mentioned, boundary value analysis is one of the black box test design techniques, and it is an extension of the equivalence class partitioning. This boundary value analysis is an extension of equivalence class partitioning. I already explained about this equivalence class partitioning in the previous session, guys. And this boundary value analysis test design technique is nothing but an extension of the equivalence class partitioning. How can the boundary value analysis can be an extension of the equivalence class partitioning? Let me explain that with an example, guys. Let's say there is a text box field which accepts the numbers from 1 to 100. Now, if you apply this equivalence class partitioning, okay, if you apply this equivalence class partitioning, what will happen to this particular text box field? We have to partition the inputs. The valid inputs are from 1 to 100, right? So we have to partition like this. First partition is like valid inputs partition and uh, any any values from 1 to 100 guys okay can be considered here as part of this partition so i can take some random number which is from 1 to 100 i'll simply take 55 guys which is valid okay if i enter this 55 into this text box field it will accept guys because it is a valid input similarly i need to test this particular text box field not only with the valid inputs but also with the invalid inputs so here i'll create one more partition this first partition having the valid inputs Another partition here, guys, invalid, invalid inputs. So here, what I'll do is, as part of invalid inputs partition, I'll take some number which is above 100, guys, okay? Which is above 100, which will not be accepted by this text box field, right? So let us let me take something like 125. If I give 125 here, this particular text box field should not accept because it should only accept the numbers from 1 to 100. Similarly, similarly another invalid input partitioning I'll create invalid inputs partitioning here i'll take some number which is less than one okay which is less than one so it can be anything guys uh, zero minus one minus two like that okay i'll take some random thing like minus 10. if i enter this minus 10 into this text box field it will not accept because it will only accept the numbers from one to hundred so this is what is equivalence class partitioning guys so here for this particular text box field there are three partitions coming one is valid input partition, other one are invalid input part partitions. That's fine. So I'll test this particular text box with a minus uh, 10 input, minus 55 and 125 input. And in this 55, it will accept in minus 10 and 125, this particular text box field will not accept, right? That's fine. So far, so good. But let's say the programmer or the developer who has written the code for developing the, this particular text box field, we should only accept the numbers from one to 100 has written the code, something like this, okay? Let's say the developer who has written the code for this particular text box field to, in, to accept the numbers from one to 100 has written the code, something like this. If, okay, if some variable I is less than one, Okay, if variable i is greater than one and i is less than 100, like this has written the code, guys. Okay, for that particular text box field to accept the values from one to 100, the developer has mistakenly written the code like this. If i is greater than one and i is less than one, then, then only accept the numbers, okay? Accept the number. I'm just writing the pseudo code, guys. This is not the proper syntax of any programming code. I'm just writing the pseudo code, okay? In English, if you are able to understand, that's fine. So here, i is the value that that particular text box field can intake. If you are entering the number, say, 55 here, 55 greater than one, yes, correct. And 55 less than 100, correct? So accept this number, that's fine. It's working fine. But guys, the developer has done some mistake here, guys. He has forgotten something here. He should not be writing I greater than one. He should be writing I greater than or equal to one. He is missing this equal to symbol, guys. As you can see here, why? Because 
tomorrow if any person or user will enter the number 1 here what will happen if any user is trying to enter 1 into this text box field according to this logic if 1 is entered 1 greater than 1 false so it will not accept guys but 1 should be accepted here right in this particular text box field 1 should be accepted so most of the mistakes will be made by the developers like this guys they will simply forget that equal to symbol because of that the border values are not accepted right so that's why guys uh, apart from this equivalence class partitioning which is giving a sample input from different partitions like valid input one sample invalid input another uh, another sample another input in, invalid input another sample it is giving but the problem here is this kind of equivalence class partitioning is not checking the boundary values but uh, the programmers are tend to do this kind of mistakes where they forgo or oversee this kind of uh, boundary values you see they uh, they because of they missing the equal symbol in this logic one is foregone and here equal to symbol is missing in this logic 100 is foregone right so only 2 and 99 2 to 99 everything is fine but uh, this particular input field will not accept the values 1 and 100 even though it has to accept because of this logic mistake in the error so how to find out this kind of mistakes or issues uh, in the application for that guys we have to apply the boundary value analysis which is an extension of the equivalence class partitioning so already this is equivalence uh, this already this uh, partitions are no nothing from the equivalence class partitioning right because of this equivalence class partition only we have created this uh, several partitions here now let's apply the boundary value analysis how to apply boundary value analysis means so here in this valid inputs what is the minimum what is the maximum and and not only minimum maximum guys minimum minus 1 minimum minus 1 and maximum plus 1 these are the boundary values guys right so here in this valid inputs uh, kind of partition some random value is 55 but what is the minimum value out of this 1 to 100 1 so we'll take one here okay this is a combination guys ecp plus b bvi we are trying here okay already ecp we got three inputs minus 10 55 and 125 now we are applying the boundary values uh, values uh, to this ecp uh, to get the remaining inputs also so according to the bva that is boundary value analysis minimum for this uh, partition is one maximum value for this particular partition is 100 right this is 100 maximum is 100 what is maximum plus one guys what is maximum plus one this one 101 so 101 will come here 101 and here what is minimum minus one here minimum is one minimum minus one is zero so how many inputs are coming guys this time extra inputs are 0 1 100 101 four more inputs so here we have to test this particular text box field not only with this minus 10 55 125 but also with minus 10 0 1 55 100 101 125 this many values we have to perform testing this particular text box field so if the programmer has done some mistakes like i greater than one and i less than he forgot some equal to symbol here the moment you provide this input as one to this text box field if it is not accepting you can report the defect case because one greater than one is false in case of the developer program there is some mistake in the developer code minus 10 0 1 155 100 101 fine these are the inputs guys so because of the boundary value analysis we got some extra inputs here we got some extra inputs here guys so let me uh, get the extra inputs here fine so here zero is another extra input because boundary value guys so this value zero and one are on the boundaries of these partitions right that's why we call that as boundary value analysis here 100 and 101 so remaining four uh, three values uh, that is minus 10 55 125 came from equivalence class partitioning right one minute guys so these green color things are the boundary value analysis whereas this red color things that i am marking here minus 10 55 and 125 are from the equivalence class partitioning fine so here this is ecp because of ecp we got this value uh, because of bva we got this value because of bva we got this value this is ecp this is uh, bva this is also bva and this is ecp like that guys so bva that is boundary value analysis is an extension of the equivalence class partitioning so because equivalence class partitioning 
will over oversee this kind of boundary values guys uh, which will uh, if a programmer has mis making mistakes like this the ecp kind of method or test design technique will not find the defects so we have to add the boundary value analysis along with this equivalence class partitioning so that we will also find the boundary values okay by testing using this boundary values this kind of issues will not be missed so hope guys you understood uh, what exactly is this boundary value analysis and how it is an extension of the equivalence class partitioning so that's it guys thank you bye